Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm here with another video today. It's going to be a little bit different though. Um, I'm going to start a series for the summertime that's a little bit of advice for um, you know kids going off to college. And since I have a science channel, I'm going to talk about seven tips for science majors to start off this little mini series I'm going to do. Okay, so some of these pieces of advice you've heard multiple times from multiple people, probably people that are older than you, you're probably like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me tell you that these are really good pieces of advice that I wish that I would have taken when I was back in college for the very first time. So I'm just gonna kind of go through these with you and you know, uh, say a little bit about why I would recommend doing these. And then if you have any questions or comments about any of these, like as I'm going or other questions about college in general or being a science major, please drop them in a comment below so I can use them in a later video. Like I said, I'm doing a little college mini series over the summer. Um, before we get back into school for the fall and I'll have my regular um, science content out then. Okay, so without further ado, number one, this is not in any particular order, but number one is going to be to research common jobs for the major that you are interested in. Okay, this sounds very easy and self-explanatory, but you're going to say, hey, I think I'm really interested in chemistry. So you're gonna say jobs for chemistry majors, jobs for science majors, jobs for biology majors, jobs for engineering majors, right? Like look up some jobs. And from that list, if you don't know what something is, look it up, say, what does a blank do? And see if any of those new jobs that you've never heard of before might be something really interesting to you. If you don't have a dream job already in mind, but you know that you like science, you know, try to narrow down a list of like between one to three different jobs as your like quote dream job, right? Maybe you're going into a field because you already have your dream job in mind. But if you don't, definitely do number one first to kind of make a very short list of, hey, I think I'm really interested in these things, okay? And if you're going in with a dream job already and saying, hey, I'm going to major in pre-med because I really want to go and be a pediatrician someday. Totally awesome. That's fine. Okay. But then once you have that dream job or a few dream jobs in mind, you're going to want to go through and look at these specific requirements for them as number two. Okay. So I mean, very specific, like, let's say you want to be a, um, a pharmacist in Boulder, Colorado. All right. You are going to type in pharmacist positions in Boulder, Colorado, and you're going to look at the requirement section. Okay. And that is the section that says, Hey, you need to do A, B, C, D, E in order to get this job. Those are the things you need to make sure as you're going through education that you do right if for any kind of job, whether you want to be, you know, a lifetime cashier, nothing wrong with that. If that's your prerogative, that's your prerogative. You can choose to be whatever you would like to be then that's what you need to go and research. You know, what do I need to do to do this job, right? If you wanna own a Chick-fil-A, hey, hit me up with a discount if you've got one. Look up how to do it, okay? But if you're gonna go to college, make sure that whatever you're studying is gonna help you get the job you want. This is something that I thought, I wanna be a microbiologist. I'm gonna get a microbiology degree, easy. Except for by the time that I graduated, you needed to do a lot more than just have a degree in microbiology. So when I graduated, I was like, ah ha ha, I have a $100,000 sheet of paper that says I can be a microbiologist, but all the jobs say, ha ha, no, you can't. Okay, so you do not want that to happen to you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at those requirements and every semester, you're gonna look at the requirements again and just make sure that they have not changed drastically, okay? Sometimes they change things to where you now need certifications as well as a degree, okay? And you're like, well, wait a minute, I have a degree, correct. But you might need certifications or having certifications might help you get a leg up in that field, okay? So that brings us to number three. So reach, research different certifications that are associated with your desired career and or major, okay? So for instance, again, I studied microbiology. I wanted to work in a hospital and help with diagnostics in the lab. I wanted to get all the little nasty swabs and spit and pus bubbles and things and look at them and determine what kind of bacteria there was. Okay, or if it was viral or fungal or whatever, right? That's what I wanted to do, help with diagnostics in hospitals. Okay, well, you can get a certification to do that now. So while you're getting your degree, you can also be working on certifications. So make sure that you're looking up certifications associated with biology degrees, certifications associated with pre-med degrees, or um, the job title, certifications associated with lab technicians, certifications associated with um, nursing, right? Whatever you wanna do, 
Okay. Look up certifications because if you don't have to go much out of your way, always get a certification in addition to what you're already doing. Right. So if you're already a biology major, but you can easily get two or three certifications in the four years that you're in college, then just get those certifications because that's another sheet of paper that says, yep, this person can do this job. Here they go. Here's their credentials. Right. So you're going to graduate with a degree and certification. That's going to give you a leg up against someone else that only has the degree because it means that you were proactive and you put in the extra work to get these extra credentials. That is the person that they're going to want to hire for that job. OK, so make sure that you're looking at certifications um, frequently, like every semester. Don't do it like every month. That's a little overkill. Right. But every semester, probably. OK, number three is going to we just talked about that one. Number four is going to be to talk to people in your desired profession. This seems like a big duh, right? Um, you probably know like, oh, hey, my cousin does this and it's cool and I want to do it. Or, hey, my best friend's brother does this or, you know, my mom does this or my mom's best friend does this. And it sounds really cool. Yes, totally. That's how you get interested in things in the first place. But I think it's also important to talk to people in the profession that you don't know. OK, so if it's your dad's pediatric practice, make sure that you call other people to try to talk to them to get their opinions. Right. Because everyone has a different opinion about something. Someone could love a job and someone could be doing a job and they don't love it, but they have a really good reason why. Right. And you want to have as much information as possible so you can make sure that you're making informed decisions and that you're getting the best advice to try to you know, help you start out. So um, what I would have done. So I would have looked up, you know, um, medical laboratory technician, you know, in the city I'm from. OK, or I would have typed in um, medical microbiology laboratories with the hospital name after it or something. OK, because then you can call those places and you're going to be nervous and you're going to be like, uh, can, can I talk to someone who's a microbiologist? Like, that's okay. You're going to look a little bit silly. You're going to feel silly, but you're going to be fine. Okay. Because these people want you to be successful. They're going to want a new crop of people that know what they're doing to take over when everyone gets old and they need new people to come in and fill those positions. Right. That's kind of how the way the world works. Right. So you need to talk to these professionals, the people who are already doing the job, people that you don't know. You need to ask them questions. You need to say, hey, can you tell me about what a normal day looks like? Can you tell me about like what your starting salary looks like? Because it's rude to say, hey, how much are you making right now? Right. Um, if you want to be ballsy and ask those questions, by all means, more power to you. Information is power. Um, but I would start off by just saying, hey, can you tell me some advice that you wish you had when you were starting out or when you were in school or there's some things that you wish you did different or, you know, what were the major challenges that you faced in order to get where you are today? Or, you know, what are some interviewing tips that you have for me um, when I'm looking when I'm talking to people who are in positions to hire me for these um, these careers? Right. Ask them those questions. And I would ask multiple. I would say three to five, because if you do. If you do an even number, there could be like a split, you know, if they have differing opinions, I would do an odd number three to five if you want to be extra seven or something. Right. But get as much information and advice from these people that are literally doing the job you want to do. OK, because they're the ones that know how to do it. They're the ones that know the connections that you need to make. OK, and then number five is going to be to participate in research with a professor at your school. Now, I waited until my senior year to do this, and I highly don't recommend doing that. I would recommend starting off as soon as possible. Um, and even if you can't be on their research team because they don't have room or they don't want a freshman on their team because you don't know what you're doing, like whatever, totally valid reasons. Ask them then if you can go into their um, like weekly meetings where they talk about the different experiments that they've been doing. They're talking about next steps. They're talking about research in the field that's completely applicable right now today to what they're studying. OK, um, go to a couple different professors and just ask them. And yes, you're going to be nervous to do this. You can always send an email. Hey, I'm really interested in getting into this field. I'd love to come and see some of your research. If you would, you know, let me come and shadow or if you have room on your research team next year, I'd love to be considered for that you know, reach out to them. The worst thing that they're going to say is no or not reply to you. But at least it's an email and it's not like to your face. So if you need to like take a minute to gather yourself, it's OK. Right. Um, but they are there at the end of the day because they want to help you. Right. They're educators. They're there because they want people to know what they know. They're trying to share their knowledge. So I'm not going to get upset with you for asking. So make sure that you try to reach out to your professors, even ones that you're not sitting in their class. Right. If you're a freshman, you're not taking microbiology. You're not taking advanced biology. You're not taking organic chemistry, right? 
you're going to be taking those in upper levels. But if you start putting out your little feelers to try to get some information ahead of time, you're going to be better off for it when you are an upperclassman. Okay. So make sure that you talk about research with your professors. If you don't actually want to do the research, totally okay. Ask if you can go in and sit in um, on their meetings and things like that, or if you can help out in other ways, right? That way you get some extra skills that you're building because you're helping in a lab, which are skills that you're going to need for science majors for the most part. Okay. Um, this is also true for doing shadowing and things like that for different professionals like dental professionals, um, pharmacy professionals, medical professionals, um, nursing, all of that. If you go and you shadow, you get shadowing hours, have something that is um, concrete. Like you say, hey, I have served 200 hours in the last three years at this location with these people and here's their information. You can call them and verify that I'm telling the truth, right? Always have like a backup, have proof of some way. Um, okay, so that's about your research. So next you're gonna to wanna to find a study group and try to register for the same courses as those people in your study group. Now this again seems very self-explanatory. When you're starting off, you're gonna to start to meet people and identify yourselves as your majors. And you're gonna say, hey, I'm a bio major. Hey, I'm a micro major. Hey, I'm a physics major. Hey, I'm electrical engineering. Great. So you wanna start getting some of these groups of friends going. You don't have to be best friends with them. You don't want to have to braid their hair or live with them. You just need people that you can rely on that are there for serious studying purposes, right? Because sometimes you're gonna wake up and you might not feel very well and you might not be able to make it to your lecture. You should always make it to classes when you can, but things come up, right? Um, so you wanna make sure that you have some people that you can rely on that you know are not gonna be sitting there texting their friend the whole time. They're gonna be taking good notes. They're gonna be listening when people ask questions and writing them down and be like, hey, some kid asked this, this is what she said, I think it's gonna be on the test, right? You need to get as much information as you can when you're not going to be there, which should be rare instances, but everyone has their something, right? You just need a support group. And then when you're trying to study, if you have more than two or three people that you're trying to study with, if other people are studying for different exams and you're suddenly high and dry by yourself, it's always nice to have extra people that you can rely on, right? And then you can also share experiences or, hey, someone took this professor, um, I wouldn't recommend them, right? You can share knowledge and you should all be doing these researching jobs and certifications and research with the professors at your school, right? And then if you have a good community of people that you're constantly um, interacting with, yes, yeah, someday you're going to be competing with them, but having these ties and helping each other out when they get a position, they could be like, hey, my friend's applying for this. They're really good. Boom, you have a job. Same thing for you. If you have a position somewhere and you're like, hey, this was my friend. They were part of my study group. They were really awesome. Helped me out with X, Y, and Z. Totally awesome. You should hire them. Boom, they have a job. Okay, this is how the world works. It is what you know, but very much also who you know. So you need to be networking early, okay? Try to register for the same classes when you can, even if it's not the same time, but it's the same professor, they're gonna be covering the same information and your exams will be on similar days. So make sure that you're trying to get, um, you know, a similar schedule with those people. So you guys have a great support system throughout the courses that you can take together. Obviously they will diverge later, but while you can, make sure that you have a strong support system. And then lastly, I'm gonna say, don't always go with the easiest professor, okay? Now, yes, I'm a professor, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator. Of course, I would tell you, don't go with the easiest option, but here's what I mean, okay? I was a microbiology major. Do I care about physics? Absolutely not, right? I do not care about physics. I care about cellular biology, I care about chemistry. Okay, but did I care about physics or you know, speech or debate or PE? No, I didn't really care about them. So for the classes that I'm not going to need to know how to do yoga for the rest of <clears throat> for the rest of my life, I want to go ahead and take the easiest professor I can for that one. For physics, I still don't know physics, and that's okay, right? I've become a master at other things. So I didn't take the hardest professor, I took the easiest professor. However, when it came down to microbiology, biology, and chemistry courses, I went on all of the professor rating, what pick a prof, ratemyprofessor.com. There's other ones now that are cooler because y'all are younger and come up with new databases that are better. Great, go to those, type in your university, your community college, wherever you're going, type in the professor's name, and then go look at the ratings. It's like five out of five, easy. Yes, I'm signing up for them. Mm, hold on. Okay, if it's gonna be a class that you're gonna be taking 
again and again and again, biology one, biology two, biology three, whatever you're doing, right? Whatever your major courses are, you need to make sure that you're looking for the professors that their rating say something like, might be difficult, but you will really learn, um, really cares that you understand the information, um, gives amazing reviews, right? These are things that you want to see in the reviews, not really easy A, right? You don't want to see that. Not in these classes. In every other class, yes, absolutely. Have that GPA, okay? But in the classes that you're going to continuously take forever, okay, you want to take the professor that you're going to learn the most from. And that doesn't always mean it's the easiest professor. Sometimes it does. But a lot of times it doesn't, right? And that's okay because you know that you're taking some of the easier professors, but then the classes that you truly care about that are going to impact the rest of your life, literally, you want to make sure that you have a good foundation, you want to make sure that someone is there to explain things to you and they're not just there to do their research, right? It's fun when you have a professor that says, hey, I'm going to make a paper airplane. If it hits the back wall, everyone's dismissed. You got 100 for today. That is fun. Yes, it is. Absolutely. But if it's something that you really needed to know later in life for your career or for your next biology course or your next physics class, your next electrical design, whatever you're doing, right? If it's something that a little tiny piece of like a brick and mortar that you needed to build that next layer, well, now you have a weakened layer, right? So you wanna make sure that you have the professors that people say you're gonna learn a lot. They're very helpful, it goes out of their way to explain things to you, right? Don't just look for easy, not for those courses, okay? All your other courses, yes, totally, all right? But those are just some of the pieces of advice I have for pretty much anyone, but specifically I'm talking to science majors because again, I have a science channel, okay? So if you have other questions or questions related to the, the tips that I have here for you, please let me know. Um, like I said, I'm doing a little college mini se uh, segments over the summer um, for my kiddos that are going off to college for the first time, for my kiddos that are transferring majors, um, you know, people that are transferring colleges, there's a lot of change that happens between when the spring semester ends and the fall semester begins. So I'm just trying to give some advice for those people, okay? So if you have any other questions, like I said, or comments or anything about what I've talked about today, please drop them below so I can address them in my later videos. Um, the next few videos I wanna do are gonna be like what to keep in your backpack as a science major right? Because you might not think about some of these things. You don't want to be trying to purchase the pants off of a person before a lab. I have done that. Okay. You don't want to do that. So I have some advice for that. Um, also some advice before your very first day of classes, like what are a few things that you can do to make your life way easier once you start class? Okay. Um, so those are the next few ideas that I have. And again, any of your comments I'm going to also use to fuel some new videos for the summer. And in the fall, we'll get back to our regular science content. Um, but thanks so much for listening. Thanks for helping me out with this new, you know, format that I'm doing for college this summer. I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.